Hi, I'm Chris Pollock and welcome. I just finished a new binding machine and a new cradle for binding. Um, I'm going to show you the machines and the cradle and then I'm going to show you binding, uh, routing for the binding on the top of a guitar. Alright, this is the cradle. Let's take a closer look at it. The plans for the cradle design come from the LMI plans. And it's pretty much uh, pretty basic. It's just a, a guitar shape. Looks like a double cutaway. This is so if you do have to route any bind any of the uh, cutaways in your guitars, then it allows for access when it's being slid around in here. It consists of these little arms. The arms or the clamps, if you whatever you want to call them, uh, they're just made up of some some blocks that are. I used wing nuts, a washer type wing nut to support it instead of the plastic knobs, a little bit more economical. But it's just made up of a right angle brace. It's screwed together through the end here and, and an a block that's used for adjusting the height of the guitar. Uh, I cover this, you could either use cork, I use leather in this case because I had it available. The back's fairly simple, it's just two wood screws, two inch wood screws, which are drill the top piece to the bottom piece. Fairly easy enough. I also used uh, carriage bolts here instead of the uh, T inserts. Just drill the hole, it's, it's, it holds it in. The carriage bolts work fine. And I also used carriage bolts on the bottom. They're just countersunk below the base. I like this as a cabinet liner plywood with a white plastic coating on it, which is really nice because it, it slides slides and my uh, top of my router table is also made of a melamine top, but it's got the same plastic which allows it for sliding around easy. The binding machine comes from a design by Mike Doolin. It incorporates a counterweight in the pulley right here. The cable connects to take off some of the load for lifting up and down. And then the counterweight in my case, I call it the uh, Sticky Fingers County Weight. For any of you who remember the old Rolling Stone album, Sticky Fingers, that was kind of my inspiration for the weight. Inside of the uh, the weight pouch is uh, lead shots to the weight I need, and they're they're wrapped inside of two uh, Ziploc baggies to keep the dust down. The nice feature to the uh, Doolin design is the fact that the router and base is removable. Just slides in and out. It's a pressure fit. It's pretty tight in there. Now what that does is to being able to slide it in and out. If you would like to, you could have several routers already mounted to the base and have stops that are, are preset onto your router and, and your router bit and depth set for if you have a, a constant bindings and purfling lines, then all you have to do is to pull the pull the base in and out and slap the new, next one in and go ahead and route it. it just holds up on all the, uh, helps out on all the uh, setup time. My design, um, I, I designed this bearing. It adjusts in and out right here. This will slide forward and back. You loosen that. And the bearing rides on the side. And you can see where the bit comes up. I use a quarter inch spiral down cut bit. And this is a UHMW shoe that I've designed. A little closer look there. So it's it's almost like a little donut. Enough to ride for your purfling. And there's also a taper. I don't know if you can see that, but it's 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 arched so that it rides on the uh, recurve of the guitar or this the arch. I also have a little piece of wood here that comes in and out. It's just the shim to keep the the router from falling all the way down. It's pretty much up to where I need to route. 
Well, the next step naturally is to place the guitar into the cradle. It's just a matter of setting it in there and then putting all the clamps up and tightening them. But the most important thing is not to keep the top level, but is to have the, the sides perpendicular or square to the table, which will be square to the router bit. I go, the, I set it at there, and, it, and I set it at the waist, and I set it at the head block. When routing the top, there's certain directions that you want to go in to prevent tear out. Um, the rule of thumb usually is to go from a high point, such as this, to a low point, which would be the valley. Or from the high point to the low point. Then again, it would be a high point to the low point, a high point to the low point. So you could go in either order that you choose. One good way would be to uh, start, say, this high point, and then go to this low point. Then you could start at this high point, go to this low point, skip it, high to low, high to low. And then, then go the opposite direction all the way around. This is our Benny Rada, so you could go this way, and then you'll pick up this high point to low. Then it'll, this has been routed. Then you'll go from this high point to that low. Continue through to here, high point to low point. In the same, same way, all the way around, you can make one clean sweep, and it'll help clean up the edge that was already done. Whichever direction you go. Just remember to go from a high point to a low point, or high to low, high to low. High to low. Either either order you do, as long as you go from the high to low, you'll be okay. Also, when using this type of bearing that works off the edge, we have to try to keep the guitar to this tangent point or square as it rides that way. You could get the LMI and Stu McDonald sells a bearing kit where it, it's this this bearing isn't here and you have a, a router bit with a different size bearings that you change to get your depth of cut in and out which is a much easier process uh, as far as routing goes but uh, this this will give you any any adjustment you need but the, the tricky part is to keep it at the tangent to the I front I have the router set up for the bearing and the depth and I'll just we'll proceed to cut it I'm also on a foot switch. 